The second law states that when the same quantity of electric current is passed through different electrolytes that are connected in series, the masses of element discharge is directly proportional to their chemical equivalents. Okay, so well, let's look at what it states in terms of mathematical expression. So mathematically now, so that M is directly proportional to E. What is E? E is chemical equivalent. M is the mass of the elements. Okay. Or we can just have it says the mass of L uh, the different masses because uh, you, you have to be specific. It's still that the, when same current is when the same quantity of electric current is passed to different electrolytes connected. So since I mentioned mass is here, here will be M1, here will be E1. Let me just call this equation one. So can I have therefore M1 over E1 is equals to constant K. Okay. Or well, let's say M, this is for this, this is for this. Okay, so that's already this. So therefore, we can have M1 over E1 equals to K and M2 over E2 equals to K. This implies that M1 over E1 is equals to M2 over what? E2. So we want to solve problems. Second law. This is what we are going to use to solve it. So just as well, it is so equation 2, equation 3, equation 4, equation 5, just for easy identification. But, but E is equals to R A M over Z. You already know what RAM is from the first law, relative atomic mass of elements over Z. Z means charge or valence. Anyway, you see E, you always, always know that it is the mass of the elements upon the charge on the elements. So this is what it is. So let's quickly apply this to solve problems. So whatever you see, second law, that is what you're going to apply. The final step of this derivation is this. So that's what we will actually use to solve this. Or at this point, can I say or, or M1 over E1 can be R A M over Z at this point equals to M2 is over R A M over Z. But it's two combustions. You can keep it at this. But you should do. Anyway, C E should do this and get what E is. So we're going to look at the application quickly on Faraday's second law. Condition for Faraday's second law must be mass two elements. So we have, we have two sorts or two, three or more sorts that are connected in series and Quantity of electricity is still constant, still the same for all the sorts connected in series. So we're going to try two examples on this second law of electrolysis. They have more on these problems in our exercise section. If three point, if six point three five gram of copper were deposited during an um, experiment, then what mass of hydrogen would be formed during the same time in the other cell? So now we have a, already know the mass of copper, okay? So we're going to use our second law equation, which is M1 over E1 equals to M2 over E2. But E is R A M over balance. Okay. We just say, we just have a, let M1 be mass of copper which is at equal to 6.35 let E1 be chemical or equivalent of copper of copper which is 63.5 let M2 be mass of H, mass of H2, so like H, H is H2, equals to, okay, let's also mention hydrogen, this should be H2, is equals to, we don't know it yet, then let E2 be 
equivalence of H2, which is 1. Okay, now let's put these parameters here. So my M1 now will be this. So we have, therefore, 6.35 over E will be this. So, so this is 63.5 over Z is true for copper. That is um, equal to HM2 over RAM of H is 1. Valence is 1. So we now have, this implies that 6.35 over 63.5 divided by 2. I have that 1.75. Alright. So let's cross multiply. What's our M2 now? M2 is what? 63 points. Sorry. 6 points. 35 times 1 over 3, 1.75. M2 that's mass of hydrogen now will be 0 0.2 gram. That's the answer. So that is on that application. So if you, if you want to see more on this application of Faraday's second law, please you go to our exercise section. So we will solve past question ranging from UTME, post UTME, SSCE, WAEC, NICO, post screening, all this. The question that has come out from many of these examples is mentioned. You see why we use this method, this formula to solve all this problem regarding Faraday's laws of uh, electrolysis. And in our last uh, objective of this part two, we're going to look at uses of electrolysis. That is an application of electrolysis.